guaranteed that they will go this entire regular season without losing four games in a row. Tawan Walker's first pitch is too high to Lane Thomas for has a home run and three hits and five career at bats against Walker. And Taiwan pours a fastball in for a strike. It's 105 games, the most they've ever lost since moving to Washington. And the curveball from Walker in for a strike, and it's one and two. Show me, but when he feels comfortable with it, it's a good chase pitch for him. And he chased there on the split. That's how they took the lead on the Marlins. 2 1 going to the bottom of the fifth. And Thomas fouls back the fastball, and it's one end. The year began, but. Not been that kind of year for the Nats. And the curveball misses inside, two and two to Thomas. That's would start on Friday against the Nats, the uh, Padres or Phillies. Slider out of the strike zone. And Thomas goes down swinging on the splitter. And Walker has stop, went one for four on the opener. And Escobar comes in on the grass against him. As Walker throws a fastball by him, nothing in all night against Abrams, who tried to bunt his first time up in game one. And he fouls back the fastball, and it's 0 2. Be their 24th straight doubleheader, they will either win or split. Curveball pop foul back and out of play, and Walker making predicts in the league and walking. They like to swing and put it in play. And he strikes out Abrams, so back to back strikeouts for Taiwan, who went one for four in the opener. And he takes the first pitch curveball up and in ball one. Saw in game one with Carrasco very much the similar grip at Horseshoe. And Manessas takes a fastball for a strike and it's one of the Weisker. 2 2 coming to Manessas. And the curveball blooped into shallow right, and that's going to fall for a base hit. Just reaching out and plunking it. And a hit I could have got. <laughs> Just place it somewhere. Garcia hits one on the ground right at Guillorme. And that'll get Walker through the top. I think lead as we go to the second. Luke Voigt leads off for the Nationals. That's a not scored thing tonight. Void went 0 for 4 in the opener today. And he lays off the slider. It's 2 and 1. Cesar Hernandez. Aggressiveness and game plan when you're spotted seven runs in the first. Team back into the game. A little flare over the mound. Charging as Guillaume with a bare hand play. And he threw him out. And I can tell you the ball rattles around in your hand to get a good grip and make a strong throw is really a tough play. There's a Hernandez one for four in the opener today. And he takes a change up for a strike. Hernandez playing third base in this game. We've always known him as a second baseman a Golden Globe second baseman a couple of years ago but played lace in the nightcap as they run Garcia out at second base every day which they should be I mean. They played Garcia to see as their shortstop of the future, and Garcia, middle infield compliment, swing and a miss, and Hernandez down on strikes. I mean, if you are the net TV slash CHR to enter, good luck, Jim. Do we know where Westmoreland, New York is? Alex Cole came off the bench in the opener when Victor Robles was out right there because he's getting into the pitcher's rhythm. Down to third, and Escobar makes the play. Westmoreland, the vision for Atlanta. Let's try to stave that off. Brooklyn's Josh Palacios leads off in the top of the third to Auburn, drafted by Toronto. And now in the early stages of his career with the Nats. Lane Thomas against Walker. And a half swing, he went around on the splitter, and it's one and two to Palacios. Making it that much more likely that it's the Padres that the Mets would see in a wild card series as Palacios takes a call third strike. And there's the fourth strikeout. I mean, that includes 19 games against the Marlins. It's a call strike to Barrera. Barrera making his 18th start. Brought up is the switch hitting catcher. They've got some solid pieces up the middle. There are. He's a guy that should develop into a good big league player. I don't think he hit as much as they hoped this year. Really, 
Up its rod for four outs in the first game today. And it's pounded foul. And with a splitter fouled off. All right, get him yet. Anybody check the forecast lately? In the dirt, two and two. It's a misting. And Barrera pops one up behind the plate. McCann hoping. Uh, at that old Dodger Stadium in Oakland and Atlanta. You could run for days. We're wider and there was a lot more foul territory. Wow. And Barrera keeps on wasting away. The second baseman or the shortstop. That's it out to right field. Coming on is McNeil, and that's going to duck in for a base hit. So quite an bat for Barrera. A 12 pitch marathon. The real record. The real record. Here's Lane Thomas, and he takes it low ball one. The Yankees get some time off. Thomas fouls one off. And, and I think there was a strategy against him. To be expecting that's not his first time up. Bounces that one and it's two and two. Two two coming. And that's fouled away. Thomas hits another foul ball, so a lot of foul. Mention that the Nats have struck out fewer times than any team in the league. And that curveball's in for a call strike three, so he changed the game plan a little bit after all the splitter stands a couple of miles off the plate. Takes the curveball inside for ball one. And he strokes one toward the left field line. Cat is not going to get there, and it's down for a base hit. Barrera goes to third and into second base with a double. First at bat in this game with a runner in scoring position, and Manessa swings over the splitter. That accounted for their only runs of the day. And blocked by McCann. Nicely done to keep that ball in the Eye on the pitcher to be able to throw it within that zone. Yeah, swinging it went around. And frame that low ball in that position. And Manessis takes one that just missed up and away. Two. Can't maneuver to two strikes. And a splitter strikes out Manessis to end the inning. The eighth, so they go to the ninth. Braves two, Marlins one. Nick Fortes popped up with the bases loaded against Sting. They're like, drop it, drop it. Oh. Even with the post in the way, still tell what was going on. Fifth straight NL East title. Now, we know Kenley Jansen is. When he's never faulted against the Mets, that's well, maybe against the Marlins, he can. Good splitter by Taiwan to strike out Luis Garcia. That doesn't strike out much. Go figure. Here's Luke Voigt. And he fouls a sinker into the ground. Nothing in bats. He's got his pitch count up. Voigt had a little flare over the mound, and Giorme made a really nice bare hand play to throw. He's gone over for 5. Chases that one and it's one and two. And he blows him away with a fastball. So Walker just keeps on piling up the street. Now Cesar Hernandez has struck out his first time up and he takes curveball low and in ball one. Their 100th game of the season. That's it toward the hole, base hit for Hernandez. The fourth hit for the Nats against Walker. But tonight, and they played phenomenal baseball. It's a little reason they won one more. And they wound up facing each other in the division. Outlasted each other. But this year. For the hundred in September. There's strike three call but ultimately it goes back to the Braves winning 14 games. Padres of the Phillies. That's will play all three games in the wild card series at home in the dugout well aware of that. So the Mets chances of winning the division title have gone and because of. Winning the season series they have the tiebreaker and so that is that.
it's a missed opportunity but it certainly isn't the end of the road as Walker picks up his 10th strikeout of the night third time this year he's. Mm -hmm.